What's up guys, Billy here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a 2D or 3D map using DJI Ground Station Pro by walking through the first map that I made from start to finish. Now the subject I was mapping is a house that my dad is building. You guys may be familiar with this scenery by now if you're subscribed to my channel, but I do like sharing the footage as I can show you guys some real world examples. If you aren't familiar with the Ground Station Pro app, you may want to go check out my complete walkthrough as it does have some fairly confusing terminology. I'll put the link to that in the top right corner, but for now, let's get on with the process. The first thing that I did is create a very rough outline of the property at my house. It was much easier to get the lines just perfect in the warmth rather than fumbling around with my iPad outside, having to deal with both the sun and the wind. Once I got onto the site, I tweaked some of the settings to ensure that during the aircraft's voyage, nothing would go wrong and I would come out with a good looking result at the end. The main things that I checked for was a high enough altitude so the drone didn't run into any trees and a proper overlap for the images so that the software would have no problem stitching them together. The application you'll see me use to stitch these together at the end is Drone Deploy and they recommend a 70% overlap to ensure perfect stitching, but we'll get more into that later in the video. Once all of the settings looked good to me, I hit the flight icon in the top right corner. It brought me to a page that allowed me to check on the status of each component in the aircraft as the waypoints were being uploaded. If any of the green icons were red, takeoff would not be permitted. For example, when I first tried to take off, it said that too many waypoints were set. Once I did some minor tweaking, I was able to take off with no problem. Once I hit start to fly, the drone first rose to my desired altitude and then made its way for the starting point. The green line indicates the path that the aircraft intends to take. I'm going to speed through the rest of this as it did take a fairly long time to fully complete the mission. It took around 12 minutes, so I would definitely recommend only starting your mission with a full battery. Another thing that I want to mention is altitude. This is a major factor when allowing the aircraft to fly itself as you don't want it to run into anything. The way that I found the appropriate altitude was by first using the DJI GO app and measuring the altitude that they gave me. It annoyed me that at the end of the mission there was no way to see what my camera was seeing. It was tough getting back home using the ground station app, so I simply switched over to the DJ Go app for better manual flight. Now that we've taken the images, let's head over to the computer to process them. The first thing that we need to do once we get onto our computer is to drag all the files and pictures off of the SD card and onto the computer. You guys know that I love staying organized, so I'll usually rename the folder and then just drag it onto the desktop. From here, I'm not really sure where I'm going to store all of these archived pictures. As you know, I do love saving everything that I capture. So for now, it's just going to live on my desktop. The next step is to go to DroneDeploy.com. I found that Google Chrome works the best, as when I was using Safari earlier, it wouldn't let me upload some of the images. I really don't know why that's the case, but I think that this website is optimized for Chrome. From here, we'll click sign up in the top right corner to create an account. Me, personally, I already created an account, so I'll click login in the top right corner. Whether you click login or create my account, you get taken to the same exact place, which is what they call the dashboard. From here, we're able to take a look at some different settings, plan a new flight, upload some images to create a map, take a look at some previous maps we've made, or even look at some of the examples that they've provided for us. To begin creating our map, all we need to do is upload the images that were taken during our flight with Ground Station Pro. The first thing we get to choose is the name of the map. Next, we'll be able to choose the type of map. We can choose between terrain or structures. Terrain is used for fields while structures are used for buildings. In my case, I was looking to get a structural map of the building that my dad is building, so I chose structures. From here, all that's left is to select the photos and wait until they're finished uploading. When selecting your photos, make sure you don't forget to add one. That would definitely suck as you probably would have a hole in the map. And if it's over an important part, you're definitely going to be kicking yourself afterwards. The upload time is fully dependent on your internet connection. Even at my house with a really fast internet connection, I noticed that the upload speed was a bit slow. So all you need to do is just be patient. Once all the images have fully uploaded, all we need to do is select some different settings for processing. Drone Deploy's servers will pretty much stitch this photo for you, so once the photos are uploaded, there's no need to stay on this web page. Now, as I said on this screen, there are a few different things that we can change. First of all, on the map, you'll notice that there is a box. We can move this around to change the size of the image. Inside of that box, we also see some little blue dots. That's where all of the different pictures were taken. I find it so fascinating that the drone and Ground Station Pro and everything can all communicate together to show where the little pictures were taken. Honestly, that's so fascinating to me, and it definitely makes it a lot easier for stitching. 
Now on the left side, we'll be able to change our map name again if we'd like, and underneath of that, it'll give us some different statistics about the map that we're creating. So the first thing it'll show us is the size of the map. It says that it's going to be 17 acres big, that's obviously in land size. And then next, it'll show us the amount of time that's going to take to actually process. It's saying anywhere between 2 and 7 hours, which is a long time, but again, it does need to fully stitch it, fully make a 3D and 2D model, so it definitely does take some time. Next, it will show us the resolution, so right now it is 3.2 inches per pixel. And then finally, it'll show us the total size of the map, which will be 625 megabytes. The next setting that we can enable is Turbo Upload, and this is only available in Chrome. As I said, it seems that this whole website is optimized for Chrome. So basically, if we select this, the images will process 10 times faster, but you will lose about half of the resolution size or quality. So if you need it right now, like you need to see the map as soon as possible, you can select this, but you are going to take those pixels per inch from 3.2 up to 6.4. With Turbo Upload enabled, it'll actually take under an hour, that is the lowest and highest estimated time, but honestly, I usually always like to get the highest resolution possible, the highest quality possible with whatever I'm dealing with, so I'll wait the extra time just to make sure that everything looks nice and crisp. Underneath of that, we can also choose processing options, and there's three different options. There's like highest quality, there's right in the middle between quality and speed, and then we have the fastest speed. So again, I want to get the highest quality, I'll drag it all the way towards the right. Next, we'll be able to set some ground control points. These are only available if you actually pay the subscription to use Drone Deploy. As of right now, I'm on the pro level and not the business or enterprise level, so I don't have access to the ground control points. But honestly, right now, that's no big deal as I'm just starting to really learn the Drone Deploy app. And then the final thing that we can take a look at is the images. And we want to make sure that, again, all the images are there before we begin this long processing period. Once everything looks good to you, all that's left to do is click Upload Images. From here, we need to wait for the images to actually upload, and then wait for them to fully process on Drone Deploy servers. Don't worry, you will get an email once everything is all ready for you. You don't need to sit there and keep hitting refresh. So, once the map has been fully processed, this is the final image that we get. It basically takes your images and your pictures that you took and overlays it over top of the Google Maps image. Now on the left side we have some different things we can take a look at. First of all we'll be able to go back to our dashboard. Next we can choose to either share or export this map that we've created. We can also choose to hide the map so it's kind of cool to see a before and then after picture. Underneath of that we can take a look at a 2D map, a 3D model, the plant health and the elevation. Uh, so first of all plant health this is kind of cool. I'm not exactly sure how to read uh, this sort of map. Um, I know that maybe if someone was more of a plant expert, botanist, whatever they're called, they might be able to read this a little bit better. And we can also take a look at the elevation, which again is awesome. Uh, the coolest thing in my opinion is the 3D model. So we'll click that and load it up. It does take just a few seconds to load up. But this in my opinion is just one of the coolest things that you can make. Um, so if we zoom in on the actual house that we were focusing on, once it registers, there we are. We pretty much have a 3D model of the house, and while the front of it looks really terrible, I mean, it literally looks like it's slipping down, if we move around towards the back, uh, it looks almost perfect in my opinion. And just by doing this with my drone for the very first time, I really do think that it came out great. I would love to do another one of these, except really just focus on this area right inside of here. Uh, the one thing that looks a little bit weird are the trees, and I do understand, I mean, they're pretty much these big green globs. Uh, so again, I think that the 3D model of the house looks pretty good. I think it turned out alright for the first try, and I would love to give it another go in the future. Uh, another thing that we get to see is the images. So if we go back to our 2D map and we select the images, we can see pretty much the confines of every single picture that we took. We can see the overlays, etc, etc. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, the other thing, one thing I forgot to mention is the measurements. We can pretty much choose uh, like the distance thing. And we'll be able to select how far something is and pretty much see the distance. Uh, so I'm really just starting to dabble with this app. Honestly, it's so awesome. Being able to make a map of whatever you want, it's especially helpful for construction just because if you think about it, you know, you look at Google Images, it's not an up-to-date picture. So you can make up-to-date maps. You can even make one per week if you really wanted to just to get a feel for how the job is going, etc., etc. 
So guys, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I have been trying to upload daily. Also leave a comment down below letting me know what you guys think of the Drone Deploy app as well as the Ground Station Pro app. I think that Ground Station Pro does need a little bit of work. It did just come out. I think it's lacking some features, but I know that DJI will update this in the future and make it almost comparable to the Drone Deploy app. So guys, as I said, this video is coming to an end and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.